All right. Good morning, YouTube, or afternoon, or evening, or night, wherever you might be. Today on Hazmat, COVID-19, Casual Friday, Alan Brunicini, Hawaiian shirt. We're going to be talking about the ERG, or better known as the Emergency Response Guidebook. We're going to love this. We're going to know this. It's going to be our lifesaver if we ever show up to a hazardous material scene and need to know what we've got. So let's jump right into this. The Emergency Response Guidebook used to be years ago the North American Emergency Response Guidebook, but the Department of Transportation, bottom left-hand corner on the cover, that publishes this in the United States of America, in conjunction with the United Nations, recognize the global impact that hazmat transportation had and came up with the modern rendition. This is going to be the life safety rope that gets us from arrival to successful planning stage of a hazmat incident. When we show up on scene, we see the placards that are from the different hazard classes that we've talked about in previous classes. If we forgot what those placards are, page six gives us our hazard classes, breaks them down, and we can see exactly what we've got. If we need to go to the table of placards on pages eight and nine, even if we don't have any other identifiers, a number, a name, nothing, we've just got the colors, it'll tell us what we should do. So let's jump right into this. Looking at the book from the edge, we can see white, yellow, blue, orange, thin, thin, thin white, green, and then white. Each of these colors has its own meaning. So we're going to start with those white pages that we begin with. As far as the ERG goes, I like to think of the white pages as being my information, my instructions, my how to use this book, my how to use this section. The very next thing that we get to in the white pages after our table of placards is going to be our identifying rail cars, our identifying tank trucks, are identifying global harmonized system, which is the modern rendition of a worldwide placard that doesn't deal with colors that can fade over time, unless it's the red outline, that if you see no red outline, you know that that GHS label has been there for a while. It gives us more instructions, and if you get to page 21, and you will see the pipeline markers. It talks about pipelines on 2021. Let's talk about what this book does. This book is on your ambulance. This book is on your fire engine. This book is on your tower truck. This book is in your PD squad. This is in, hopefully, the dump truck glove compartment or door for the driver. Reason being... Anybody that is awareness level trained needs to be able to not only use this book, but understand what it's giving them. So those instruction pages are very important because not everybody goes and lives hazmat all the time every day. So something that we used to do years ago before I had a cell phone, before I had a cordless phone, I had a phone stuck on a wall and I had a cord and I would go around the corner to try to have a conversation, but there's no privacy with a corded phone. In those days, before Siri could answer what's the phone number for Glenn Trahan's amazing hazmat classes, we had to go to the yellow pages if we wanted to find a number. So I want to point out a couple of things. In the yellow pages and in the blue pages, 
you're going to find four digit numbers, three digit numbers, and names. When we go to the yellow pages of the emergency response guidebook, we are looking for a number that identifies a certain chemical or family of chemicals. That identifying number, just like in the United States of America, regularly I'm asked for the last four digits of my social security number, which for today's class are zero, 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 zero. So anywhere in this country, there's going to be somebody else with zero, 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 zero as their last four of their number. But in Texas, in Houston area, the last four of zero, 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 zero is very rare. So when they look up Glenn Trahan and they verify that those last four are mine, that identifies me. In like manner, the United Nations number that we utilize, if we go back into our ERG instruction pages, that four digit number that the UN has assigned to that chemical or family of chemicals, in numerical order, you will find in the yellow pages, the four digit number, the four digit UN number. So UN NA is four digits. The reason why we need that on a placard or on a label, you may see that four digit number. You won't see anything other than the red diamond with the number three in the bottom. And then you'll see the 1203 in a big block in the middle of the placard. 1203, if we look it up in our yellow pages, we will see that we've got in the family of petroleum fuels, because 1203 is listed as gasohol, gasoline, motor spirits, and petrol. Depending on where you are in the world, it's fuel for your car that needs spark plugs. Whereas if you look up 1202, we have diesel fuel, fuel oil, gas oil, heating oil, light. It's different than 1203. They're both going to be a red placard. But if you've ever dealt with diesel, you know that the flames don't just come up like they would with gasoline when it hits a match or a hot muffler, catalytic converter. So it's important to know what is our red number three placard really identifying in our family. And so that UN number, we can look up if we've got the four digits in our yellow pages. We go to the yellow pages for a number. Now, I like to think of the blue pages. There was a cartoon when I was a young boy and it had a whole bunch of little blue characters and they all had their own names. And those names identified them. Well, if I look up diesel, Diesel is identifying that combustible liquid. If I look up gasohol, gasohol is identifying that combustible liquid. If I look up naphtha, naphtha is identifying that combustible liquid. If I look up anything by name, just like those little blue characters had their own names, if I've got a name alphabetically listed in the blue pages, I will find those names. Now, the nice thing about the yellow and the blue pages, they both have the four digit UN number. They both have the three digit guide number. I love that the emergency response guide book is the book that's holding all of these orange pages of guidance. So in the yellow pages, I find a number. 
in the blue pages I find a name, and in both of those I'm using the number or the name to give me the three digit guide. So when I go to the blue pages and I look up Gasahol, Gasahol is on page 120 and it gives me guide number 128, the three digit guide number 128 is the orange pages that I need. It's not a page number. I want to point that out. The guide number, you'll see 128 on both the left and the right side. But this is page number 154 and 155. But the guides are what we need to know how we get from arrival to successful plan and implementation of how we can keep safe and keep those around us on that incident scene safe and make it a better situation. That's why they call 911. Now, you'll, you may have noticed when I was flipping through the yellow pages and the blue pages, these highlights, these green highlights. When I was a student, I was taught to highlight the important things and by highlighting those important things, I knew when I went back to review and study, that was something important. I needed to make sure I've got that understanding. In hazardous materials, they're hazardous. We want to make sure that if there's something specific that we need to be aware of, we know that. And so when you find a yellow or a blue page entry that's highlighted, and that's what you're looking up, we're going to skip those guide pages. And we're going to immediately go to the green pages, which give us our initial isolation and protective action distances. Now, I mentioned that the blue pages find the name and the blue and the yellow pages both have the three digit guide, but they also both have the four digit UN number. Why do I need the four digit number if I have the name you might have thought? The reason why the green pages, these tables, of initial isolation and protective action distances are numerically based off of the UN four digit number. So that's why you'll find those on the blue pages because if I show up to a tank truck that just says gasohol on the side, well gasohol is not gonna be listed, but if I show up to an MC331 and see ammonia on the side, unless I know that 1005 is ammonia, I've got to go look up ammonia, and when I see ammonia and hydrous in the, in the blue pages, it's going to give me that four-digit UN number, and it's going to be highlighted in green. I'm going to say, oh, I better go to the green pages, and I get over to the green pages, and I find, oh, 1,005. Now I know what I'm worried about. So the green pages kind of preempt or one-up anything else, because sometimes if we're on an incident and we take a breath, without an air pack on because we're in the safe zone or the support zone or the cold zone and we catch a bad wind change and we catch a breath, that could be enough to cause us an issue. Some things out there, it only takes a couple of breaths and you're done. Dirt nap. And we don't want that. I want you to go home at the end of your shift safe and at least as good as you were when you started, if not better. So when we have a green highlight in the yellow or the blue pages, we immediately want to go to those green pages and notif notice whether it is a small spill or a large spill so we can take the appropriate distance measurements, whether it's daytime or nighttime, so that we're safe and the people around us are safe. This is one of those things that you want to look at in depth. If you go to the little skinny white page section at the beginning of the green pages, right there in between the orange and the green, it gives you a little bit of understanding about those green pages. And then it tells you on the very last one, right before you get into the green, what the definition of a small or a large spill is. Basically, if you've got a liquid and it's in a drum, one drum or smaller, small spill. Anything bigger than one drum, we're going to treat that as a large spill. 
the next page, it shows you what it means to be initially isolated. The drum that's leaking is my black dot center. The gray shaded area is my initial isolation all the way around. It's the radius from the dot to the outside edge, all the way around, right? But then the next page over shows you your downwind. And a lot of people don't understand. They think, okay, I've got to be that far away from the center if I'm where the wind is blowing on me. But if you notice, they draw a little box to show you how wide downwind actually encompasses. As it gets away from that initial isolation circle, it spreads out. So it's not just straight downwind, it's in a trapezoid almost, out away, a cone. The ERG gives me information for the first 30 minutes or less until I have an MSDS, I have a specialist, I have somebody on the phone or on site that can get me better, more specific information than what this amazing piece of equipment, this amazing tool for our toolbox can give us. Easy to understand, white gives me information, yellow gives me a number, blue gives me a name, so I can get my orange pages, yellow and blue, or so I can get my green distances so that I don't breathe something that's gonna make me or somebody with me fall out. Thanks for coming to ERG class.